I just watched a video where Blackbeard here makes this cool kopesh out of bronze, and I think I saw something that most people probably missed. The true MVP of the whole piece, this wooden box. This is the coolest, most versatile casting flask I think I've ever seen, and I need one in my life. I'm going to show you why I think it's the best casting flask out there, uh, and then I'm going to make some modifications to it, because obviously I can't leave well enough alone. And, uh, you know, maybe you want to make one for yourself. Just a thought. Blackbeard's design here is used as a vertical casting flask, but it can also be used horizontally. The real genius is how it does both in a way that's very simple and effective. More on that later. For now, let's get building. To start with, you're gonna need some wood. I'm using hickory 1x4s from like a home improvement store, Menards, I think. Two eight footers. I'm also making a set with 1x2s, two of them. The hickory part is important. We'll go over why later. Before doing anything else, cut some grooves in one side. This is to hold the sand in place. You can use a table saw like I'm doing here. Uh, you can also use like a grooving plane. You can use a router. Looks to me like Blackbeard probably freehanded it with a router. That works just fine. Those grooves get packed up with the sand and then they kind of hold it in. So if you pick it up, the sand just doesn't slide out at the bottom. Very important. Next, cut them to length. The previous flask video I made, I, I used miter joints. No, forget that this time. No miter joints. Cut the long side, I think, to three feet. The short side to eight and a half inches. I think, maybe. I could be wrong there. The important part here is that the short side overlaps the long side. This is important, I'll tell you why later. Since I'm using hickory, I have to pre-drill everything because hickory is basically like steel. You might want to pre-drill anyway, it's just a good idea. I'm doing it on the side of the bench here, the corner, I'm using that to align the boards at a roughly 90 degree angle. Uh, you don't need like a fancy jig with like clamps to hold things at 90 degrees, you can get them, that's fine. But you know, if you're careful and you have a reference point and uh, you know, use the force, uh, you can you can get it to line up all right. It'll, it'll work just fine. What's, what's a couple degrees off? It's not that big a deal. These probably aren't the right screws from the job, but use what you got sometimes, especially if you forget to go to the hardware store. Build the bottom, then build the top, and boom! You got what looks like a horizontal casting flask. And you can use it for that. Basic, long, skinny flask. But anybody who's used these can tell you alignment is an issue. You gotta be able to like set it down around the sand, take it off, take the pattern out, set it back down, and set it down exactly the same place every time. Or you end up with weird like shifts in your patterns, it's bad. So for the long dimension, Blackbeard solves this problem in a very clever way. He uses tongue and groove board. Now that means every time he sets it down, the tongue and the groove go together and it's kind of registered lengthwise the same every single time. It's actually all the way around it, which is pretty cool, but I'm only going to replicate it at the bottom. I've made some where little tabs lock all the way around, and I've always had binding, so I just kind of want to avoid that. That's really clever, because he doesn't have to add anything. It's just part of the flask, and it works. It's a good idea. I don't have tongue and groove board. I mean, I could make it with a table saw, but like, what do I look like? Someone who's not lazy? I'm just going to stick a board on the end, so that when I put them together, you know, I just kind of set it up against that, that edge and then set it down. Admittedly, it's not as clever as his design, but... Whatever, it'll work. Now side to side, he uses these little these little tabs that you see on either side. And that works fine. I've done that before. It's, it's a good idea. But here's where I think I can improve on his design a little bit in multiple ways. Watch while he's ramming this up. The sides are bowing out quite a bit. And he has to use a clamp to hold it in. This is because they're like really long. And you're putting a lot of force in there. Now look at this flask I made earlier. I put these flanges in the side. Now this gives me a place to put screws in so the screws can register the top and the bottom in the same location every time. It also gives me a nice handle where I can grab and like lift it all up because remember these get really heavy. It also adds like some dimension, like a brace, kind of like, you know, angle iron. It'll be really difficult to bend this out. Now admittedly this is pretty short, but the same thing applies to a really long flask too. Add that to the fact that this is insanely stiff hickory wood and the problem solved, right? Almost. There's still some bowing that's just bound to happen. I mean, there's a lot of force going in here. Blackbeard here uses a clamp while he's ramming it up, uh, but I'm too lazy to use a clamp. So I'm gonna drill some holes. I'm gonna do near the top of the top and the bottom of the bottom. It's away from that center parting line. You know, probably about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch down from the very, very top. This won't get in the way with the pattern. Your pattern shouldn't be that close to the top anyway. Gonna run a threaded rod through that hole and stick nuts on either side. This will completely prevent it from like bowing out Plus, it's small enough that you can ram the sand around it. Just don't like slam right on top of the rod. That's, that's probably not good. Avoid hitting it directly, but you know, either side of it, no problem. And for those of you thinking, oh, that tiny little nut, that's just gonna sink right into the wood. With pine, yes, but there's a reason to use hickory. If you've never used hickory before, just imagine a baseball bat, only it's not as flimsy or dentable as a baseball bat. It can also take molten metal touching it. Believe me, I tested it, it's good stuff. Lastly, Blackbeard has these plywood sheets, top and bottom. These are super important. If you're just using it like laying on the ground, you could probably get away without it, except for the bowing out part maybe, but stay with me here. They reinforce the sides, yes, 
but they also stop the sand from bulging out. So it's sitting upright, okay? And when you pour in metal, the taller the thing is, the more head pressure you have. It's called head pressure. It's pushing down. It's like the deeper you go in the water, the more pressure there is. Now that's pressure in the metal pushing outward on the sand. And if you get something really big and tall and you fill it up with metal, it's going to bulge it right out and you're going to cover your feet in molten bronze. That's a bad day. And the taller it is, the bigger the problem. I got away without it when I did the, the vertical casting of that spear point, but that flask was this big. See the difference? Now one by fours might not be necessary. When I had the sword casting guy here back when I was doing that silver sword, he showed me some of his flasks and they were like this. They were like, they were like one by twos, two one by twos with the side things. And that was enough to hold in every, to hold in all the sand. Probably it helped him use less sand per flask, like a little more efficient, because he was doing a bunch of these things all at once and sand is heavy. But this might not be enough, you know. You might need a little more height on the thing if you're doing, for example, a gingery lathe bed. Anyway, here's the cool part. To use it vertically, you can see Blackbeard here unscrewing the end piece. No extra junk sticking out like on a commercial like vertical jewelry flask. No tin can garbage like on the one that I made before. No, it just works. When I asked Blackbeard himself about this design, he was careful to say you need those side sheets to hold everything in, although because you know spilling bronze on the floor is a it's a bad day. But check out what happens when you take the end piece off and you don't have those sideboards on there. It's all wibbly wobbly. You'll never make it to the point where you're pouring metal into the sand because the sand's gonna fall apart as soon as you tip the thing up and it all flops all over the place. You cannot use this flask incorrectly. You can't use it vertically without putting those sheets on. It just won't work. The sand will fall all over the place. So not only is it simple, you can't use it wrong. It's practically foolproof. I bet I could screw it up, but I'd have to try real hard. It's brilliant. It almost makes it safe. Probably shouldn't say that on YouTube. And now I have one. Well, two of them. And you can build one as well. One downside to hickory. This stuff is heavy. How heavy is that thing gonna be when it's full of sand? I might die. Oh well, deal with it later. Uh, is this something you want me to do, by the way? Like, there's a lot of makers on YouTube and they do a lot of like really cool things. They have cool solutions for problems and they never talk about it. They're just like, show it for 10 seconds, move on. And I think a lot of people miss it. You know, they never talk about it. But I never stop talking about stuff so I can talk about it, right? Anyways, thank you to Blackbeard Projects for allowing me to steal your design. And uh, everyone, have a good day. See you next week.